Okay, this is a very, very depressing story. And I would like to preface this by saying that this is no way in me waving the flag of like, poor me. No, like I don't need pity. I don't need sympathy as terrible as it was for me. And literally the worst part of my entire life to, to this date. Um, I don't think that I could, I could go back and change it if I could, because there's just no way that I would be who I am today. Um, I think if it didn't happen, there's a good chance that I wouldn't be in the industry and wouldn't, wouldn't consider to keep doing what I'm doing. So the reason I'm sharing this is because it's a very, very real story of very real consequences when things go bad, like proper bad. Like, especially in our industry, we kind of had this, had this strange, like, cone of silence and we don't like to talk about the things that went bad. We don't really like to compare notes. Uh, when it happens, we kind of just re retreat into our caves of shame and just wait for it to go away and fade into obscurity. And look, it's definitely, for me, this is not a story that I have to bring up. And if it was up to my parents, they, I wouldn't. But I think it's a really important story to share because it brings a whole perspective to a topic that is just never ever ever discussed. How my family and I and the business got to this point is a very very long and complicated story. It involves my parents and I think one day I would like to have them come on here and tell their side and share their story but for them everything is still very very real. Um, both my parents had to file for bankruptcy and that's a that's a that's a six-year punishment yes and it was very hard for them they suffered what I suffered they suffered like ten times more than, than I did yeah I guess I guess uh, here we go um bit of context for those of you who don't know me um I my name is Anna I owned a cafe in Canberra called Patizé, um and we operated for six years uh, within the first three years, we became famous for the creation of the Freak Shake, which is a video for another time. And then <laughs> as fast as we rose, we came down even faster and harder within, within the first three years. So that statistic of businesses failing within the first three to five, year, five years is very, very, very accurate. Now, <clears throat> how we got there I um, is long and complicated. We're going to break it down into parts and the mistakes that I made. Um, and there were many, like my book of mistakes is like this big and my book of wins is like this big, but, uh, the wins wouldn't have happened without, without the mistakes. And, um, and I think I've gotten better at really like calculating how to approach things and making sure my wins count. So in the last like year of Patizé, um, things got like really, really bad. Our businesses, like we were not running a good business. We had terrible food, terrible service. We had employed people that really we just should not have had employed. Now, to be clear, this is not me blaming employees. Um, I think that's like the first thing that people like to jump on. Like it's like horrible boss taking advantage of his employees. I mean, like that's the narrative that's, that's gone for the most, especially, especially perpetuated by the media. So it's so complicated. The thing is our industry, is hard. Everyone knows it's hard. It's actually really terrible. Like it is terrible. And I really, cafes and restaurants in their traditional form of full table service, in my opinion, are absolutely dead. They are not a business worth starting. Do not do it. Like it's just, and I will go into parts of that in future videos and we'll break it down step by step. But the way things are structured in this country for small business, it's just not, it's just not worth it. Like, it's just really, really not worth it. Like, I did it. I was in it for six years. And honestly, I'm really fucking surprised I didn't kill myself at some point, especially in those first three years. End of, uh, end of Patizé, everything was going really, really bad. It was very much a struggle just to keep operating week by week. And uh, we weren't making any money. The business had a terrible reputation. Um, it wasn't a good work environment for me, all the people I was employing. It was just... When you are drowning and you are not sure when you're going to be able to like <laughs> get some money to like buy some food or like afford basics, um, you are definitely not your best self. You are not your best self. You made bad, bad decisions. You become really emotional and reactive. You are, the exhaustion is just a whole other, other level. Okay. So the last six months of Pazé before we went into liquidation and bankruptcy, etc., before we closed the city store. So we had two stores, the original store in Mardi Gras and the, and the second store in the city. City store, huge mistake, but 
story for another time. But at the time I was living with my partner, I'd, I'd been with this guy for seven years and I was living with him. For the last four to five months of Pater's Day, I did not draw a single wage. Like I didn't draw any money. I sold my car because I couldn't afford to run it and also to put money into the shop. And I also took out a $50,000 loan to help it along. <laughs> and it's funny, I took out that loan because I, I was like, a, when, you, when you're not doing well in your business, you will fixate on all the wrong things. So, I became obsessed with like having to replace the furniture because like the furniture was really going to solve our problem. So I went and took our 30 grand and replaced all our, like all our chairs. And then I think I took out another 20 grand for, I, I can't even remember, just shit that didn't matter. And that's personal loan. Yeah. So personal loans, your interest rates are like always around 20%. So I would not draw a wage. I would just take I would like pay myself the bare minimum that would cover the minimum co like repayments for the loan. And that was it. And I was entirely living off my partner. Like he was supporting me at the time. That was obviously creating its own unique problems in my personal life. And I had this terrible business. So when you have not running a good business, um, when you're not doing well, the first thing that you'll stop paying is tax. First thing, because that's not, essential to everyday operations. The first, like for me, it was like, all right, we need employees to be able to operate. So every week it was just trying to scrape enough money together to pay employees, um, pay what we could the bare minimum to our suppliers. And that was it. Rents accruing, taxes accruing. And when you're like limping like this for a long time, those taxes and back rents really, really, really add up. So by this point, the ATO was well and truly knocking on the door, like, um, pay up or die basically. And uh, we just, we just couldn't trade our way out of it. We were in a really big hole that was, we we're never going to escape from. And it was pure unbridled hell, pure hell. It was every single day. I remember when I was still living with that guy, I wake up in the morning early to go to work and I would just have this like paralyzing anxiety attack of like, Oh my God, I'm alive and I have to get up and I have to face the day. And I would have these like, and I would feel like there was like something literally sitting on my chest and then I, I absolutely could not breathe. And it would take me like a good hour to get out of bed in the morning and basically get the courage to face the day because the whole business is full of negative energy. Nothing's doing well. Uh, your employees know things aren't doing well. They're not happy. You're not happy. You're not happy, you can't make them happy. So you have this like horrible negative ecosystem that's just everything that a business should not be. And you kind of trick yourself into thinking, oh, I'll get there, like I'll have a good weekend. Or if I make this special, then all these customers will come in for it and buy it and I'll be okay. Or like me, taking out a loan to buy fucking chairs. Like really? I'll rewrite the menu, that, that will be the solution. Like no, no, no. Things like this will take a long time to happen and it's death, death by a thousand cuts. And you can't, there's no trading out of it. Like you're not going to make enough money. It's just, it's just, it's just simple. You're just not going to have enough money. The real rock bottom moment for me. Oh, I feel sweaty just talking about it. Um, <laughs> cause it's just fucking tragic and it's depressing as shit. And I do not need anyone to feel sorry for me. I don't need that. This is a memory for me that this moment in my life is something that I reflect on every single day, every single day. It is like, this fresh memory burned into my soul and it's like a fresh wound. It will never heal. So everything that I do and have done since is actively to never let that happen ever again. I'm ashamed, you know, I made a lot of mistakes. I was a terrible business owner. I was a terrible leader. I was just purely, purely just running on fear and stress every single day. You don't sleep at all. Like you haven't slept in months. Like every day you're just thinking like, how am I going to get through today? Like, fuck. And I just, I came home one day from work. I came home really late. Like we were having like crisis meetings with my family and business partners, like every second day, just discussing the same shit and thinking that we had like got a great solution to fix it. <laughs> we never did. Like we, we never, we never did. But it was just like panic, like everyday panic. Like, okay, get your bookkeeper to pay the wages, make sure you pay the wages. And then whatever's left, just divide it amongst the suppliers. And that's it. And we'll figure it out again next week. At this point, um, so like my parents are separated and mum had the family home. And dad was living in a small one bedroom apartment in the city, just near the city store. Um, they were forced to sell the house. So mum 
um, which they had worked so hard for their entire life and it was a fully paid off house. Dad moved in with his parents and my mum moved into the little apartment in the city near the city store. So one night I came home and it was quite, I think, it, I think this was like August. It was very cold. I remember it being cold, like July, August sometimes. It was cold and dark and I got home and my partner just turned around to me and he was like, you need to go. I can't live like this anymore. Your life is too stressful for me or something along those lines. I don't really remember. It's just that I was just like, everything was just going so bad that I was like, oh, okay, well, we'll just add that to the fucking pile. And it's funny, like I didn't cry. I didn't scream. There was no fight. I kind of just like, cool. That's what I'm going to do then. Like, I'm not going to stay here. Fuck that. So I went and put my pajamas on, packed a suitcase with like bits and pieces that I needed to be able to go to work for the next few days and left. Now the thing is, <laughs> I had no money and I had no car. Like, and when I say no money, I like not even fucking $5. I could not afford an Uber or a taxi, right? I couldn't drive myself anyway because the car belonged to him. So I, <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm going to leave. Where and how? I have no fucking idea. So I left and I went and sat down. <laughs> I went and sat on the side of the road in the gutter, like a truly miserable piece of shit. Like it was, I just felt like this absolute pathetic failure of a human being. And I was like, how the fuck did I let it get like this? Why am I here? Why is this happening right now? Like it, a lot of it was shocked. Like I wasn't, I don't remember crying. I just remember seeing there being like, holy shit. Is this where I am now? Fuck. Like, and who am I going to call? Like the, the paralyzing embarrassment was like next level. Like I was like, I have to call my parents. Which one do I face first? <laughs> oh God. I remember sitting out there for a good hour. And I remember looking up at the apartment and he was like standing on the balcony, just watching me just sit out there in the darkness. And I was like, this is so fucking sad. Like this is pathetic. And I was like, really hard on myself. I was like, oh, Petritus, you are pathetic. This is fucking pathetic. What's wrong with you? Like, how could you fuck up this bad? It took me a long time and I decided that the easiest option would be to call mum purely because, um, like we're very close with my grandparents, my dad's parents. And, um, I didn't want my grandmother to know if he, if I had to ring him and he had to come pick me up, then they would know what was going on. And they'd be like, what the hell is going on? And it would just be a whole thing that I was just not ready to deal with. So I called mum and she was hysterical. She started crying. It was so bad. And I was like, mum, I can't afford to get a taxi or anything. Like, can you come pick me up? And she at the time was getting her hair done with my auntie. And my aunt, like mum was like middle of like dyeing her hair. And then my auntie called my uncle Ivan and then he came and picked me up. God love him. Like, I'm grateful to this day. Like, he was really cool. Like, he, I was sitting there. He got there. And, like, when I saw him, I started to get, like, really upset. And he was like, no, 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 it's all good. Doesn't matter. Let's just go. Come on. Give me your bag. Get in the car. It's all good. Like, we're fine. And I was just, like, starting to get really worked up. And then when he said that, I was like, oh, okay. That's fine. So I obviously told my dad the next day. Dad was very, very upset. And I was like, please don't tell you. Yeah, I can't face her yet. I tell you what, oh, fucking hell, fucking eye makeup on, for God's sake. And you know what's wild? This happened like probably four years ago now. Like this sort of stuff, when you go through this, oh, it just stays with you forever. Um, that was like about four months before we closed down the city store. Businesses go insolvent, people go bankrupt. So when you have a company, you will have a director um, and that director is responsible for the financial activities of the company. So if a company doesn't do well, it's not paying its bills, then whoever's owed money, they come after the director personally. Hence why parents would sell their house and everything else. I stayed, sorry, mum picked me up and I stayed at the apartment there um, because I didn't have a car to be able to drive to work. It was easier for me just to stay there. I could just walk to work every day. I slept on a blow up mattress on the floor in the lounge room of her one bedroom apartment for like the last, for about four months, I'm pretty sure, before we actually like <laughs> wrapped up how to say. If I didn't have paralyzing anxiety every morning before, I really did by this point. Like, and this was like the point where every morning I would wake up and just wish I was dead.
like literally. Dad and I look back on this time now and we actually laugh. We're like, how are we still alive? Like, how did we not kill ourselves? Literally, it's not a fucking joke. Like, I remember being like, oh God, it would be so much easier. Like, I could just do that and everything would be over. But I could just never leave my parents, ever, because that would just be worse. Oh, I'm hot. You know, going through a breakup, all that sort of shit. Business is like shit the bed. Everything in my life just absolutely shit the bed wherever I feel she feels times a thousand and I didn't want to cry in front of her so I would get home at the end of the day end of a really hard day and I would just go and sit in the shower for an hour and try and get all my tears out in there so she wouldn't hear me I'm 100% she heard me woman is smart she knows what's going on but she didn't really break my balls over it and she didn't ask me at this point like we had just gone through I swear to god I've hired every single chef in Canberra oh chefs that's a whole video by itself. I have learned since how to run a good kitchen and hire the right people, but at the time I didn't, you know, when we were like, oh, we were just always desperate for chefs. I just got to the point where I was like, fuck it. I cook the food myself. I had just two boys who were cooks and I would get up every morning at five and I would walk to the shop and um, open and close the kitchen every single day, seven days a week for zero pay, zero anything um, for like the four months that we had left. The worst part about it was like I was like 20 kilos heavier than what I am now. Like very, very unhappy. Everything in, everything in my life was just unhappy. Uh, the apartment we were staying in was in the building next to the cupping room. Um, and that's significant because at the time the cupping room was like the best cafe in Canberra, right? And the most popular and the busiest. And I have to walk past that fucking cafe every single day, morning and afternoon. It just felt like the walk of shame. I felt like everyone was watching me and knew who I was and knew what was going on and talking about me. 100% they weren't, like nobody cares. But <laughs> that's what it felt like. It was like this horrible walk of shame every day and it was so hard to do and I just felt like I was like trudging past in my chef gear and my chef shoes every day and I was fat and just fucked. Like we were just waiting to be pushed over the cliff like by anyone, the ATO, a supplier, our landlord, like there was like someone, we were just waiting to be pushed over the cliff and we were just trying to figure out what to do because we had exhausted all our options. We got told to go and see a liquidator. We had a four hour meeting with him for him to tell us, nah, you guys are fucked. You have to file for liquid liquidation. Phil, you're going to have to go into bankruptcy. And that's pretty much that. And to be perfectly honest, it kind of felt like a bit of a relief because we had just like tried so hard and tried to fix it and had explored every option Fixing a shit business takes a really long time and time is just not what we had anymore Like we were very much living on borrowed time and there was just no way so we decided to throw in the towel We were like, uh, we're like, oh fuck it. You know what? We'll just close everything. I'll go and get a job doing something. I don't know I can't do the public services. I'll defy it like just 100% I'm not built for that shit and um, That's it like game over a lot of people wonder how it is we were able to keep operating in, in the Monica shop. It is not because we had some magical hidden trove of money and assets that we tapped into. We were not one of those companies that went into liquidation and bankruptcy. When we had to do that, we got the full effects and the full punishment. We were absolutely juiced to death. Obviously not smart enough and not rich enough to have been able to avoid that. Like when I hear stories of businesses that go into bankruptcy and they're just like, carry on life as usual how how did you fucking do that like how do you still have your mansion in fucking red hill and all your cars and jet ski how like and that's actually really common and really frustrating why like why is it allowed to exist like we absolutely got completely put down and we paid for every single sin little and large we had agreed not to tell my grandparents we didn't want them to know what was going on because we didn't want them to feel like it was their responsibility to fix it because it wasn't it was our fucking problem it was our grave we need to dig it and put ourselves into it <sighs> through the wonderful rumor mill that is the canberra greek community they found out I remember my grandmother called me one day and she was like the fuck this is what I've heard. What is going on? Tell me right now. And I was like, oh, I'm really busy. Yeah, I'll, I'll call you back. And I rang dad and I was like, she knows. And he was like, how? I'm like, I don't fucking know. We just told him everything that was going on. I'm like, here you go. This is what's happening. It's all good. We're going to throw in the towel. That's that. What we're going to do, we don't know. It's not anyone's problem. Basically, my grandmother saved us. And she uh, passed away two years ago now. Oh, fuck me. Please, for God's sake, get it together. 
So basically, she just was like, well, for fuck's sake, no, I'm not going to let you guys just like have nothing and just do nothing. No. Went into her retirement savings that she has worked her entire life for and bought the Monica shop under her name. Basically, took over the business and employed me and my parents to, to work there and run it. This happened in 2017, I believe. And then for two years, um, I worked in there and ran it. We just worked really fucking hard, like really, really hard. Fixed the business, created, made it profitable and used those profits to buy it back off her and pay her back, which took two years. I bought it back off her under my name in 2019 and then ran it as my actual business and company for the two years until we sold it last year. How we turned it around and how we made it really successful and how I got the money that I got for it is complicated and I'll break it down into bits and pieces because I really, really, really want other people to be able to do well as well and help people to learn from my mistakes and how to navigate this shitty, shitty, shitty industry. And if after everything that I tell you and you still want to do it, then good for you. You made for it. But after everything I tell you, I've talked you out of it. I would call that a life saved. <laughs> yeah, I owe her everything because I am pretty certain that if that didn't happen, um, I just would have just gone and I don't know, but I, I definitely know that I probably wouldn't have be in the industry now doing what I'm doing and planning to do what I'm doing now. I guess she took a lot of trust and faith in me to be able to like rise to the occasion and fucking learn and work and learn and work um, and fix things and create a good business because she essentially took that risk. Yeah, she put it under her name and she didn't have to and entrusted us who we had fucked up our own business colossally to not do the same thing to her. The work it took in those two years to build it back up was like, oh, so hard. It was just like painful because we kept the business name, yeah, and, and the liquidation and the bankruptcy and all the shit was very public knowledge and it was in the Canberra Times and it was her Canberra and all that sort of shit. So everyone had a fucking opinion on it and everyone knew and Canberra's very small and when these sort of things happen I kind of feel like people almost love it and just love talking about it. It was almost like initially especially for at least the first six to twelve months uh, after that people avoided the shop because it was like oh did you hear about them? Yeah they went into liquidation and they went into bankruptcy like mm, let's not go there because you know failure is a transmissible disease. <sighs> That's essentially the crux of what happened it was the worst fucking moment of my entire life and uh, I owe her everything. And the thing that breaks my heart to this day is that she just passed away um, before I got married, um, before we sold the business and could see like how well it was doing. I mean, she definitely saw it like really like getting momentum and building back up, but she didn't really get to see like the full like results of all the hard work. Having a baby. Oh, fuck's sake. <sighs> fuck, I can't talk about her anymore. I definitely feel like I suffer from a bit of imposter syndrome because like, People always say to me and like on Instagram, oh my God, you're amazing. You're so successful. And I'm like, oh, I don't think that I am. <laughs> Selling Padise was the opportunity um, to just close that chapter of my life. And now I've, 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 I'm finally starting again. Like that money and the sale and moving on from that. Now I feel like I've like got myself to a solid foundation to build again because the money that I made is not enough to retire on. Not that I want to retire. It's not enough for me to be able to afford a house and build a new business. Like I don't have a house. I rent. My biggest achievement over these last few years is becoming debt free. Like I paid off that fucking loan. I moved in with my grandmother and uh, we just had the Monica store. I was like drawing a very small wage and I put the entire wage into that fucking shitty loan. I didn't have a car um, for like a good year after that. I would always just borrow whatever car was at the house. Grandmother or my grandfather needed the car. They would drop me off at work and somebody would bring me home. I only bought my first car since all that beginning of last year. Yeah, I bought my Kia beginning of last year. I just needed to get rid of that debt. Like that debt was just like this choke, like this choke, had this choke hold on me and I just, I just hated it so much. And I am really debt averse <laughs> these days to the point where even thinking about a mortgage, I'm like, oh, that's a very big loan. <laughs> like it makes me very uncomfortable <laughs> and I have my own issues with that and I'll get over it eventually. But like, 
the reason they haven't like bought a house or anything like that uh, is because the money that I have from that sale have an amazing business concept, an amazing plan, and I want to take all the lessons that I've learned and finally make something of it. And uh, I can't buy a house and do that at the same time. And also, which is super fun, and we're going to discuss this in a future video, capital gains tax on the sale of a business is really fucking high. I basically can avoid paying it if I spend all of that money investing it in a new business. You know, it's wild that you work that much, pay so much in tax, it'll make your brain, it makes your eyes water when you get your tax bills, yeah? That when you finally sell it and you're half dead at the end of it, sell it and then you still get taxed on that again. Like, haven't I paid enough? Are you fucking all right? For me, I don't feel I would not classify myself as successful. Like, the business, yeah, I made that successful, but me personally, I think I am just about to get started and hopefully I can pull it off and really create a great business and a great company that people want to be a part of and, and work for and I want to have people with me for a long time. It's not about making heaps of money. I want to be comfortable. I want to be able to buy a house in the next couple of years and I want to be able to go away with my family. That's literally my only goals. Like I don't have an interest in buying a fucking Lamborghini. <sighs> just want to be happy and those sorts of experiences really really change your perspective on life and it's like a real equalizer. And as, as painful as that was, and as horrible as that was, oh, you know what? Like, my life right now is just so good. I'm really happy. I've married, like, the best guy. Um, my biggest motivating factor now is to be able to create a good life for my family and take care of my parents. They've worked really hard. They have suffered. They have sacrificed. And it's their turn to be able to, to live and have a good life. And that's a big thing for me. Like, creating a good business that just takes care of them forever. And they can do whatever the fuck they want because they deserve it. The end. That's it. It's a very, very shitty story. And if you're considering going into business, that is a very, very real consequence. And I am by no means unique or special in that experience at all. It's just not talked about. It's not publicized. It's not interesting for the media. It's not cool. People would much rather hear about employees not like missing out on their super when the business goes under. It's not a good thing, but there is, it's, it's such a complicated, multifaceted issue. And I really believe there are good people out there who like lose all their livelihoods and, and that's it. Like they just like suffer. Uh, I hope, I hope you, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I know it's so tragic and it makes me emotional. It feels like it happened yesterday. Like even though it was a long time ago, it feels like it just happened. Like, it's my like sole motivator to, to do well and to never fucking let that happen ever again. And that is why it's taken me so long to find a, a new location for, for my, new, my next business. Because I don't have faith in the business climate. I really have zero faith in our government. Our government could, can, couldn't give two shits about small business. Like, let's make one thing clear. You are on your fucking own. And hopefully I can share my lessons and uh, my stories and my perspective on things. And hopefully it helps other people. Um, because it's rough out there. Anyway, that is my sad, depressing story. Uh, it's very, very much my rock bottom and my daily motivator to never let that happen again. Now move forward and build a good company that people want to be a part of. Not just like business partners, but it's employees, you know, because as like punishing as being an employer can be, it can be also so rewarding when you find good people. Oh my God. In the last couple of years when I actually became a decent business owner, the people... I naturally then just employed really, really good people who I would die for. Like, I just love them so much and I love them to this day. And I wish that they could all just work for me forever, but I know that's not realistic. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, <laughs> let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, and then the videos from now on are not going to be so depressing. I have some very, very funny stories that I would definitely love to share. And then also some insight. The things that I believe made me successful and be able to turn the business around and create a really great sellable business. All right. Bye.